were really the ones that uh, do well that did that and that's why they ended up coming away with their victory the other night. The other thing you look at, Corey, is they've got to be able to outplay the Fullerton College defense. The way you look at it, Fullerton College has got one of the better defenses, and the thing is you've got to be able to make those special shots out there tonight. And the starting lineups is for the visiting Hornets. Sean Newman Jr., 6'1", freshman from Culver City High School. Jeremiah Davis, guard slash forward, 6'3", freshman from Fountain Valley. Shaquille Bender, out of L.A. Prep, 6'2", 170, the sophomore. Kobe Newton now, another sophomore out of Westview High School in Portland, Oregon, 6'2", 175. And Sammy Howland, patrolling the paint. He is 6'11", out of La Habra High School. The Highlander will jump center against Hattie Asaley who gets the start, the double-double man, 6'5", out of Los Alamitos. Alvin Renfro Hardy gets the start tonight instead of Ballard out of Colony High School, and the tip is controlled by the Hornets. Allen Wright, a 6'3", freshman from Torrance. Cypress in the man-to-man, -man. up is Bender, no good. Rebound is Allen, and he's fouled on the putback. And quickly, Mark Onyejekwe. Gets the foul. He is a freshman out of Cyprus. And Grant C., the fifth on the floor for the Chargers. 5'10", out of Pauley. And, Corey, I was basically talking to Perry Webster and saying to Perry, you know what, your team almost shoots 80%. And Perry said, well, it's not only we shoot 80%, but look how many times we go to the free throw line. They go more than anybody else in the state of California. And it is 2-0 Hornets. Cypress in their gold, as you see, blue trim. Dumped down low to Salem, who had a big game in the first matchup that Fullerton won 70-59. Kick out to C. Just started here at Don Johnson Court. Right. Back door. Kick out to C now. In and out, no good. Rebound tapped around. Hallen controls it for his second. And here's Newman Jr. Davis. Athletic wing. Here's Colby Newton, one of the best shots in the state. Misses Onya Jekwe with the rebound. Renfro Hardy gets the start. Colony High School product. See, tripped by Newton. First personal, first team foul. Has a minute 10 gone by in this first half of play. Fullerton averages about 15 fouls a game, and this is one of the things that Perry Webster talked about. They play such solid defense, they don't allow their opponents to go to the line that often. And there's a steal by Bender as he slides out of bounds. So Cypress retains. Wright will inbound. Only two players in double figures the first time they played. That was a Saley and C. Saley steps outside, showing range short. Newton with the rebound. Here come the Hornets in their blue. Gray trim. Floated by Bender. Long. Rebound is Saley, his second. Here's Grant C. Needs to have a controlled game. Might need to get over double figures as that's poked out by Davis. On the inbound in front of the Hornet bench as Mark, good crowd here trickling in at the start. Right with the left in the lane, traveled. And unfortunately it gets called on him, but Corey, you and I talked about it, I told you with Wright, he plays that physical type of basketball. That's the type of defense Fullerton plays. I think Wright should be a vocal point on the offensive side for the Cypress Chargers. Ball moving by the Hornets, poked away by Onya Jekwe. He saves it as a Saley to the Hornets. 
Bender fakes a three, steps in. Leaves it for Newman Jr. Reverse layup, no good. Rebound Howland, out fought for. Had, he said, give me that. 17-35, first half. Monia Jekwe, man-to-man -man defense applied by the Hornets. Both these teams defensive-orientated. Monia Jekwe thought about the three with seven to shoot right at the right elbow, gets into the lane, dumps down too many passes. They can't get it off. Shot clock violation. Slater Miller will check in along with Blake Ballard. Ballard wearing number three in gold. It's Miller number four. Asaley and Renfro Hardy check out. These are those Cypress College uh, soccer uniforms that I sort of had when I was calling soccer out here for Cypress College, all blue with gray numbers. Light blue numbers. And the three is missed by Davis for the Hornets. You're, you're telling me I'm colorblind while I'm watching this? What color are you calling them? Cypress in the gold. Oh, that's <laughs> Fullerton. All right, there we go. I am colorblind. C pushes off, leaves it. Ballard can't get around the screen. Good defense by Newton. Miller picked up his dribble, almost stolen by Bender with six. Four. Mark is going to have to pull up. He does from 17. Shot it long, doesn't hit rim. And the second shot clock violation is in, in many trips for the Chargers. And Christian Butler checks in for Onizekwi. Oh, I'll, I'll take the blame for that one because I had Cypress in the blue. <laughs> the players are going, wait a minute, what's the old guy talking about? Well, that's I, I'm the old guy. That's why I'm up here. 16-20. Just started the first half of playing this OEC matchup. Newton, kick out, Bender, open three. Looks good, is good. So Shaquille, transfer from Mount Sar. LA Prep, and there's a three. Countering is Christian Butler. So three for the Butler, and underneath is Howland gets away from Miller. And the first foul on Miller, second team foul for the Chargers. And that's what makes Fullerton so dangerous as you come up on playoff time. They can go inside, they can go outside, but again, they have a 6'11 guy who can make free throws as well to make it an 8-3 ball game. And I think that first bucket for Cypress really got them out of the doldrums. Here's Blake Ballard for three. And just like that, they get six points and cuts the lead to two. Eight to six Fullerton. This is Chargers Live on SportsNetUSA.net. Coach Drew Alhadif. Postseason appearances 2016, 17, 20, 20, 21, and 22, or 2021, 2022 season. Makes the playoffs. Another one of those young coaches that really brings a, a young mind and a great attitude to the sideline. Well, first of all, let's call them what they are. They're educators. We talked to Perry Webster. What did he tell us, Corey? Great group of kids. They do what they have to do in the court. They all go to class, and they're all getting good grades. So when you talk about Coach Al Haddam or Perry Webster, first of all, they are educators to say the least being here on the court. 15-27 to play. Hornets with the ball and a two-point lead. Newman Jr. Now there's Newton, dumps it down low. Howland had good position, and he's eating him up inside. He's got seven points, seven of the ten points for the Hornets now. Miller out of Huntington Beach High School, excuse me, Ocean View High School in Huntington Beach. C, a Saley back in out of the timeout. Turn, spins on Howland with the strip, gets the ball back. And Hattie with two. Nice stick to itiveness on that shot. Davis and Bender. 
Newton drives, pushed by Ballard. First personal, third team foul. You were talking about Howland with seven, Corey. He only averages 5.5 a game, so he's already above his normal average. Yeah, he's in there for length and defensive purposes, averages a block a game. On the inbound, thought it was a violation over and back, and here's Ballard one on one with Newton. And he crosses the pond with the Euro and is 10 to 10. Newton, outstanding shooter from three. Gets Ballard in the air, an easy two. Kobe's first two. 12-10 Hornets with 14-14 to play in the first half. Butler, C, Miller, Blake Ballard, and Asaley on the floor for the Chargers. C has it now in the lane, off glass for two. So Cypress looks like they found a little bit of their offensive rhythm. Well, they had it their last game, Corey, and it's just starting to catch up with them in this game, too. They had great balance in their last win on the floor. Davis double team, cross court pass to Bender who has one three into the lane with the left. English no, Howland there for the putback. He's got nine and it's 14 to 12. Mark, you said the big people for both teams are gonna have to have a big night. Howland certainly living up to his side. 13-15 to play, 13 to shoot, C step back, misses everything, Newton ahead to Davis. Jeremiah has his first two points of the game. A freshman from Fountain Valley leaked out. Miller, not a threat, past the three-point line. Butler with the first step, quickly reversed with the left, got a finish, does not. There's Jeremiah Davis leading the break, no numbers. He just goes on a Haley and attacks. Attacks the chest and picks up point number 18 for the Hornets. Well, you can see as an offense, the Hornets don't have a left or a right side that they favor. You'll see that with some teams that they can only really go down and attack a board with one hand. The versatility of the Hornets is helping them on the offensive end. Masaley working on Hallen, spin, he's double teamed. He's got to kick that out, there's a foul. We got the reach in or the push. They're gonna get the reach in on Shaquille Bender. And Masaley gonna need better ball movement here. Once he, gets dumped, once he gets it down low on that block, he's going to have to kick it back out to exploit that double team. And the player on the wing, they can go right back in to him if they want or take that three. Ballard for two. He's got seven. Hey, Corey, this is what we talked about, how you beat the Hornet defense. It's a quick catch and shoot, which is what Ballard just did. For the Hornets, Bender, pull up three. Shaquille with the pill is doing it nicely, 21 to 14, 11.30 to play in this first half. Butler right now at the high post. C, straightaway three, looks good, is not good, too long, rebound in to Javon Jones out of Pasadena High School, and there's an offensive Player control foul on R.J. Banks, who's also in the game for the Hornets. 13 foul. So a reset on Yajekwe, Ballard, Asaley, Butler, and Wright on the floor for the gold-clad Chargers. In blue, Newton. Ofebu, who's number 24 in blue, a bounce back from San Jose State. Bender, Banks, and Jones round out the five for the Hornets. Here's Onyejekwe. Leaves it for Ballard. Another three, quick release, no good. Forced that one, but Asaley is there to clean it up for another opportunity. 
Didn't hit rim, 13 on the shot clock, throws it to Bender. No numbers, but again, forcing the issue. Almost throws it away, wide open three by Banks. RJ extends the Hornet lead to 10, 24 to 14. A timeout taken by Cypress with 10, 46 to play in this first half. Chargers live on sportsnetusa.net. Corey, when you look at this Fullerton team, Sean Newman averages almost 13. Jeremiah Davis sitting there at 12. I'm going to give Bender, well, he's at the easy number. He's at 14. Kobe Newton at 14. Those are normally starters for this team. So you're looking at four guys that walk out there easily in double figures. You look at Fullerton overall, better shooting team, 49% from the floor, 40% from three-point country, which you say is more than adequate out there. And then you add in 38 rebounds. Well, that just makes them a quality team, and that's why they're in first place. And Fullerton on the flip side, or excuse me, Cypress on the flip side, shooting 41% from the field on the season, 67 points per game to Fullerton's 86. 30% three-point shooting. Actually, we give them 32% at 31.9. Oh, Nijekwe, one-on-one is a Saley. Skip pass to Ballard. He's open from 15. Usually goes in, and it does. He's got nine. Good play call out of the timeout to cut it to eight. Quick release, Jones. And quick release, quick three, 27 to 16. Halfway through this first half of play. Wright and Butler. Butler has it, double team and picked it up. Onya Jekwe averaging about five, six points a ball game. Wright gets cut off, Ballard traveled. Ballard gave it the old head fake through the head back and usually when you do that, you're gonna go up. Ballard decided, well, if I'm a tennis player, I fake it and just keep going. Oops, wait a minute. Got to do something with the basketball. He didn't have his steps right. Sean Newman Jr. back in. We're number four for the Hornets to Banks. There's Davis in the lane. No, rebound. Only a Butler working one-on-one. -on -one. Picks up his dribble, that's when he got in trouble. Miller, Asaley, and Ballard round out the five on the floor. On his check, way kick out to Asaley. Driving, spins in the lane, over one, gets fouled. And I think they're gonna get Davis on the flyby. And they do. But again, the big man's gotta be the aggressors. They're down by 11 right now. And he's got to figure out, Corey, I really do agree with you. I think they go down low to him if there's nothing there. He kicks it back out. And if you've got the shot when he kicks it back out, you've got to take it up. He's averaging a double-double this season, 12 points, 12 rebounds if you round up. 65% from the line. The first drops gives him three points. Grant C back in for Christian Butler. If you're Cypress, you've got to stay within sniffing distance of this Hornet team. Misses the second, and it's a 10-point lead for the Hornets. Good crowd here at Don Johnson Court. Banks had an injury last year. Good to see him back. As here's Davis, or excuse me, that's Jones. For Cypress, good pressure up. And one thing we notice about this game, this team, Mark, has seven seconds on the shot clock. There's a push off, no call. And Jones makes them pay 29 to 17. The blatant push off with that extended arm. That looked like an asphalt play. <laughs> you know, it really did. I'm going to shove you. Nobody's going to blow a whistle. And here's C, and C gets called for the carry. That's not going to make coaches on the left happy. No, not the carry, but the call. 
But both coaches have been relatively calm in this game so far. 8-18 to play first half. In the corner, up top now, around the perimeter. Banks keeps it, skips it. Jones fakes the three, gets in the air, almost got caught to Newman. Cross court pass to Banks, good movement without the ball, just short, rebound. Fought for it, last touched by the team in blue, Cypress ball. So Fullerton 21 and one on the season, Cypress 14 and eight, Riverside is 14 and eight. They both sit at seven and three in conference. Fullerton is 10 and 0. Saddleback making a good run right now, six and four in conference, 14 and eight on the season. 7.44 to play first half, 29-17 Hornets. C pulls up, good defense, four shot, no good. Rebound and there's a travel or a foul. They get a foul on Hattie Asaley. Mike Ofebu was there. Looked like he fell on his own, but we're way up here. So Banks in the fourth court. Front court or fore court, whatever you want to call it. Not the froth court. Here's Jones, Newman Jr., Banks. Jones on a kick out, in and out, no good. Ofebu with the strong board. He gets his first bucket on his second rebound and it's 31 to 17. 6.56 to play, first half, 14 point lead by the Hornets. Cypress with 12 to shoot, cannot rush at this time. Ojekwe, Onyejekwe misses. And here's Banks again. They have four players mark at any time that can bring the ball up the court. Much like the Cypress women's team, Mark, and there's a stepping on the line is RJ Banks. You know, that's interesting you bring that up because that was a question in my mind there. Perry Webster told you sometimes he goes with a four guard offense. He always right? goes with the four guard offense. He always offense. goes yeah. with four guard offense. Okay. Yeah. And Sean Newman Jr. might be the best point guard in the state. But again, just like the women's team for Cypress, all four can bring it up so you don't quite know where you're going. And here's Allen Wright with the pretty up and under. And he'll head to the line. That's what you need to do, big man. As he goes to the line, averaging 10 points and five rebounds a game. Yeah, Allen's the type of player, Corey and I were talking when he walked on the court, and I said he's a, the physical player, things that people forget about the game of basketball. This is not a finesse game. It's a physical game. If you're no, playing no, it's, against, a, it's a finesse game. Well, and it's a physical game, too. It's yes, it both. is. Yes. You know, it's not just a finesse game, is what I said. Well, you so said it's it not a... just one, it's no. both. And, and I think sometimes people forget that you need to have that physical player like Allen that will go in there, mix it up, take the big hit, get to the line, finish the baskets that fouls will not be called on. 6'5", 250, LA Premier Prep. Misses the second, so it's 31 to 18. Newman Jr., double team, finds the open person, Newton, hockey pass, Bender doesn't take it. Down low, no, excuse me, skip pass to Newman Jr. No splash on the rotation, and they're gonna get a foul on right. They're gonna say he held Hallen. Call the hook. The zip tie. He's looking over at the bench. You know, you said this game wasn't frothy. I, I thought you were talking about the coaches when you said that. A couple more calls like that. Five <laughs> team fouls for both teams. Off the inbound, no good by Newton. Five apiece, Miller spins in the lane, gets it blocked by Howland, jump it up. Alternating arrow stays with the Chargers.
Coach Al had it, pacing a little more. You gotta figure out where his offense is gonna come from. They started out slow. There's 5.48 to play, but again, about the 14 minute mark, they found a little bit of a rhythm, and now it's gone again. They beat OCC last game on Wednesday by 22. Tonight they're struggling here, see, air ball. And Davis, nobody picks up ball, he's all the way down, leaves it for Bender in the lane with a little cross through. Eight for Bender. And that wasn't the Euro step mark, it was more like a cross through in the lane. Reach in foul on Newman Jr. I made a move like that the other night. And then I realized I was locked out of the house. So. I thought I wish I could dream like that. Ryan Stewart checks into the ball game. I can't even dream of making a move like that. You two are special. All right will inbound. Ryan Stewart, number 44 for the Chargers out of Santiago High School. The one in Corona. Here's C with eight. Working on Newton. Right. Going to have to raise. He does. Long rebound, Newman Jr. Out of the pack to Bender, always running, kick out. Davis doesn't take it, wants a better look. And Jeremiah has six. It is 35 to 18. 441 to play. Butler all the way blocked by Howland. That's his second block of the game. Fullerton continues to run. Kobe Newton. With this fifth point, forces Cypress to call a timeout, and it's a big 2-0. 20-point lead for the Hornets, 38-18, with 4.28 to play in this first half. And somebody said on Wednesday that Fullerton was ripe for an upset. That person in this first half was completely wrong, as they're playing really well. Well, Corey, what you've got to like is Benders in the corners, got the wings, got a three-point shot. Defense backs off of him, so what's he do? He takes it in to about 10 feet and takes a very easy two-point shot, which you know the old guy here appreciates that when you'll take really the higher percentage shot. And when you watch Fullerton play, yeah, they can knock down the three. There's no doubt about it. But they also are smart enough to realize that they'll take that easier shot when it's given to them. Now Cypress, at least it looks like to me, feels like they're in that position being down by 20. Let's just throw it up from three-point country and hope we get close. No, they're, and they're not there yet, but they have to have some type of rhythm coming out of this uh, timeout and get a good shot, a good look to get them going one more time because we've seen the Cypress team, they play choppy. But what we've also seen this year is a relentlessness to get back into games or to stay in games. So they come out with Butler with the ball on Yezekwe, Ballard, Wright, and C. Butler has it now. In the corner, and Grant C loses it out of bounds. Again, that pressure defense, not more than an arm length away, employed by the Hornets. Newton, Newman Jr., Bender, Davis, and Howland. Man-to-man -man defense out of the timeout. Here's Newton. Straight away. Short. Ballard turns it over. So out of the timeout, Mark, two straight turnovers. Yeah, and Ballard wanted to run with it, Corey. There was no place to go. 3.45 to play in the first half. Newman Jr. working with the right. Bender set his feet, missed a three. Butler with his second rebound. Butler looking, almost turns it over, and it is. Bender is second steal, working one on, or excuse me, three on one, running the lane is Newman Jr. His first bucket, and it's 40 to 18. And right now, Cypress looks befuddled, bewildered. 
bedazzled, to say the least. Both these teams have a solid eight-person rotation. Right, one of those, and there's an offensive foul on Allen Wright, his second. And Mark, it's more of a reaction on the official hearing the oomph rather than the play itself because that's one of those plays where right, yeah, there's movement, there's touching, there's into, but really. So it's not a, just a finesse game is what you're trying to tell me. No, I'm saying that was a play on. Allen, alley Ute from Newman, Newton. I am gonna say, Mark, that it's Howland finesse the official to call that foul. 42 to 18. Renfro Hardy, right thought about a three, didn't take it. 2.30, 230 to play first half. C, too much dribble and has it knocked away and last touch kicked out off of Onya Jekyll. 42 to 18, 227 to play in the first half. Newton for three. Mark, two of the best shooters in the state, Kobe Newton and Blake Ballard, are on the floor tonight. Here's Ballard trying to counter from 17. No. Back rimmed it. Here's Newton one more time. RJ Banks, that's a charge. And you like Allen Wright giving up his body in that section. Could have gotten his third foul, but again, he does that well against OCC. No, Riverside on Saturday, Monday, he took two straight charges in the game they lost and against OCC. That's the game they won on Wednesday. So Lake Ballard out of Valencia, number two checks in along with Slater Miller, joining right on Yezekwe and C. And Corey, here, here's where if you're Cypress, you can't, if a, from a player's point of view, can't get into that panic mode. Hey, we're down by 27. I've got to start, no, you just chip a little away. Chip a little away. And 150 to play in the first half. Lake Ballard, Miller to see, Onyejekwe drives, pulls, misses, Miller is there. And that height by Hallen is bothering everybody underneath for his third block on the Ejekwe step back three. No good, rebound to Newman Jr. And there's a foul on Lake Ballard trying to cease the momentum in that break. And you've played enough, Corey. I mean, when you get somebody who's big, like Fullerton's got down low. How much does it weigh on your brain as a shooter, height-wise, when you're shooting against somebody who seems towering? You just have to be more strategic. Get into that chest when you have an opportunity. Limit those long arms. Movement without the ball is going to be key when you got a guy who's going after every shot. You got to make sure you have somebody across the lane ready, willing, and able to receive a pass and put it through. One twenty-four in this first half as both free throws drop for Newman Jr. 47 to 18. Right, working against Davis. He's got Davis, triple team. Kick out on Yezekwe is due, yes he is. The Centurion, 47 to 21. Cypress's first bucket in 345. Skip pass, one extra pass. Driving the lane is going to be Godfrey Little, double team to Javon Jones. 
even when you play excellent defense, Fullerton somehow scores 50 to 21. They average 90 points a game, Mark. Yeah, and, and they've been close to getting the century mark in their last few games that they've had out here. This could be the night. Yeah, they've hit the century mark two times. First time was against City College of San Francisco, and there's a jump ball, a little tied up right. And it should be Fullerton ball on the jump ball, and it is for in possession. And it's a great crowd here. Dignitaries from the Fullerton side and Cypress side in the stands tonight. 18, to 18 on the game clock. That means the shot clock is off. Newman Jr. with the left. Kick out. Too easy. Short. Rebound. Loose ball rebound. Actually, last touch by Cypress. And Slater Miller let it go out of bounds instead of corralling it. Yeah, he had a chance to take it. Thought it was off a fourth of player. You should have one of the dignitaries come up here tonight, Mark. If anyone's listening, little before the buzzer. No good, but at the end of a blistering first half, it's Fullerton 50. Cypress 21. This is Chargers Live on SportsnetUSA.net. Corey Nalen, Mark Pavlovich, Gabby Nalen in the window. Don't forget tomorrow when we all get up early and have a little softball going on on SportsnetUSA.net. That's right, the SportsnetUSA.net Invitational starts tomorrow bright and early Cerritos takes on Folsom Lake that'll be our first game then Folsom Lake will take on Southwestern Southwestern then will stick around and take on Orange Coast College all those games tomorrow on sportsnetusa.net and the rankings just came out for softball San Mateo, who won everything last year, is ranked at number one. Cyprus, that's right, Cyprus College. Brad Pickler's team is ranked number two. Sierra, who lost San Mateo, is number three, and so on and so forth. When you look at it, a variety of teams, and it's early. Nobody's done anything yet on the softball field, so it's conjecture when you look at those rankings. And that's exactly what we'll see what happens. What will change tomorrow when Cerritos, who is ranked in the top ten, who had a great season under Cody as she uh, brought her team into the playoffs last year, took on Irvine Valley, and Irvine Valley beat them at home last year. Irvine Valley went to the state championships. Lisa's team, along with Brad's team, San Ana College, Last year was the first time a Northern team versus a Northern team in the finals in the history of softball and the CCCAA. So don't forget tomorrow that's going on. And then coming up not far away will baseball and softball for Cypress College here on SportsNetUSA.net and Chargers Live. So that won't be far away. Ed Ford, myself, Albert Robles, Corey Nalen, Ryan Osborne, a cast of a few thousand, plus all the parents and student athletes will be out there for that game. So if you're around in the area, don't forget to stop by Cypress College or go online, see what they have going on sports-wise. Come on out and watch these very talented student athletes. I mean, we at SportsNetUSA.net love the game of softball. We have been a proponent of that sport for many years. So we'd like you to come on out, watch a little softball with us on SportsNetUSA.net or in person, you know. Sit on the old pine and watch these student athletes play well on that softball field. Brad Pickler has been around here for years. 
And when I look over at state championships, I've got nine of them staring me in the face across the way. As you look at how many championships have won, Brad has gotten his fair share of championships between him and his brother. His brother ran the baseball program for many years here at Cypress College. So six years. Corey Daniels, six championships is what you're telling me for baseball? And so, uh, you know, between the two brothers, they have brought trophies home. And now you have Wes running the athletic department here at Cypress College. Need to come out and visit him. They're going to be redoing the softball field. Five of them. Corey just came back from visiting his beautiful wife. Ed, come on out here. That, you know what? I think Don Johnson Court is a really fantastic place to watch basketball from uh, it's a beautiful court it's named after one of the more prolific people in the game of basketball Don Johnson what Hall of Fame at Fullerton Hall of Fame at Cypress I'm getting fed this on my uh, Hall of Fame at UCLA three Hall of Fames for Don Johnson Corey Nealon's passing that on to me sitting here just taking it easy over on my left so you get to sit across from Corey and I. The team sit below Corey and I. They have what I would call a viewing area that's enclosed. You could bring your lunch, your dinner, sit over there where Gabby Nalen's right at now. Watch the game through the glass, nice and comfortable. It gives you a variety of different ways to watch the wonderful game of basketball. Volleyball is also played here. It's a beautiful campus. Cypress College and you know if you're one of those individuals that is older like me looking for something to do hey maybe changing a career maybe you're retired and said I just can't sit at home I need to find career number two but I don't know where to start at well visit your local community college just ask and say, hey, uh, you know, do you have a brochure in your school? I'd like to know what sort of programs they have here. It could be in the arts, it could be in the sciences, it may be in the area of financial. Uh, you never can tell where your interests may take you. And look at what they've got. Right now in California, community colleges are still free to those who want to go to a community college. Dip your toes into that second career and no better place to find it than here at the community colleges. We have coaches that we know sitting across from us from Fullerton College. Not only are they coaches, but they are educators. And we have educators that we know. Jerry Padilla is across the way. International studies for years at Fullerton College. Jerry's a big follower and alumni of the school that he taught at. Always travels with the teams. There's a man that can teach you all about Orange County if you wanted to know about it. And that's one of the things. Maybe you just want to go back to school for fun. Maybe you just want to be more knowledgeable when you talk to your grandchild. You know, when they start talking about the Internet or what they're doing or they're streaming or they're podcasting, you stare at them with that blank look on your face because you still have the rabbit ears on your TV like my partner next to me. You may want to have that class that you take where you can talk on the same level with that grandchild. Or, you know what? take that class with your daughter or your son that art class maybe that creative writing class that you both wanted to take or political science because you both think you know what's going on in the world i tell you what you're going to find some of the best programs some of the best educators in the world at the community colleges here in the state of california so take a little time out next time you're out there and like Corey nailing it always tell you Tonight, you could have walked in here, watched one of the top basketball teams in California, maybe not in the nation. Then again, could be Fullerton College, ranked number one state of California. Come in. It's not going to cost you anything. You sit down. You watch a game. You get to see wonderful student athletes. Maybe meet somebody new sitting next to you. Hey, swing out here during the week or on a weekend. Watch a little softball or baseball. You could see the next All-American from UCLA, Arizona, Arizona State, Oklahoma, Tennessee 
if you're into women's softball. Who knows? So take time out next time you're driving down the street and you say, wait a minute, that's Cerritos College. Stop there. Oh, that's Cypress. There's Fullerton. Uh, wait a minute, that's Irvine Valley. Golden West College, all in the area. Take a time out to see what your community colleges have to offer you, not only in the world of education, but in the world of entertainment. We do all the time here on Sportsnet USA. Dot net. I'm going to bring my partner back right now because we can talk a little basketball because I've got to just find out something about this Fullerton College team, Corey Nail. And You, you, know, you I, know I was just going to let you talk the whole half. I, I do, but i, I got to ask you. You have seen a lot of outrageous basketball teams in your years of being somebody who enjoys this game on the community college level. You spent a lot of time down at Saddleback. Just in this one game and looking at the record, where would you say? Are, are they that cream of the crop team? Or, Mark, there's a lot of cream of the crop teams in community college basketball. Up to this point, they are the you know one or two top teams in the state, them and San Francisco City. Two best teams that I've seen this year. Uh, they had a, a great matchup early in the season uh, with a tournament up north. I forgot which tournament, but they went to overtime and Fullerton came out victorious in that. So those have been the two top teams all season. Uh, then you've got the teams like San Bernardino Valley who beat Fullerton for their only loss. Uh, you've got East LA and they just uh, got upset by, I forgot who, but East LA is a top team. Um, Sequoia's is always gonna be good. And I'm missing one that I was going to talk about earlier. Oh, where's my, where's my list? So Citrus, they're ranked number three in the state. They're a team who's similar to Fullerton on the outside. They got a lot of good guard play. And when you get to the tournament, guard play is what really fuels you. So Citrus is playing really, really well. San Jose, San Jose City is a team that I've got a chance to watch all season. And they're one of those teams that... You know, it, it's, they're good, they're steady, they're consistent, and they've gotten better as the season has gone by because they're really finding out what type of team they are. And when you look at a team like Cypress, they're a team that once you get to the playoffs, if they're on their game, then they're either, a, they're going to be a tough out or you're going to not want to play them in the first round because they will beat you. That 14 and eight record, yeah, it's, it's a winning record, but they're a little bit better than that record. That's why they're sitting in second place in the toughest conference in the state. Uh, and that's the thing that's deceiving too, Corey. When you look at the rankings and everything else, I mean, I don't know really that much when I look at the Northern California teams, I sort of sit there and say, okay, if I drop them into Southern California to play in the OEC or some of the other conferences, would they be as good? Yes. Okay. That, yeah. I mean, that's that's a hard judgment call. Yeah, they, they would be as good. Um, they, they'd, be a, they'd be winning programs. Uh, they're going to have a few more losses because overall we have a biasness towards the Southern California region that it's, it's a little bit tougher. But they're still going to be successful programs. Teams like Sequoias, they come down here to the Fullerton College Tournament all, all every year and play well against the top teams and do well. Um, Columbia is another team that I had a chance to watch. They're an exciting team. So yeah, they do well also. It's gonna be an exciting tournament. We talked about how the women's tournament is Palomar, OCC, Santa Rosa, and the rest. I think that's gonna be deep. But this year's men's tournament might be the best you've seen in quite a while. Because, yes, Fullerton is good. San, City of San Francisco was good at rank one and two. But I think the overall level of play that 14 teams have a legitimate shot, that, that's what makes basketball and watching it and calling it so much fun. Well, I think what makes basketball so much fun for me, honestly, is you could have, you could be undefeated. Tournament starts, you play Mark's team, you have an off night, Mark beats you, and guess what? You're 29-0, Mark beat you, you go home. 
Yeah, the best team does not always win in a tournament. And exactly. That's what makes it so exciting. Best team always wins in a four, uh, seven game series. Okay, we've had that conversation. You Sometimes you don't think so, but it, it is. Well, even like the College World Series for softball, mm -hmm. where if you lose, you go in the loser's bracket. You still have an opportunity if you're a hot, if you're one of those teams yeah, you that can when be you get on a run, you can beat everybody. But in basketball, it's one and done, you know, for the men and the women. Yeah. So you can be the best team, and all of a sudden it's just one of those nights. Yeah. No matter what you do. I thought, I thought we were singing that tomorrow with Ed Ford. Oh, we'll be singing that tomorrow. Oh, okay. One and done? I hope not. Wow, one of these nights. Oh, okay. So we're sitting at a half, just about to start the second half. Fullerton all over Cypress, 50 to 21. And in that first half of play, we'll get to live. We'll get to live stats in just a moment, Mark. Okay. As you enjoy, let's see here. So, 50 to 21. Fullerton, Sammy Howling, 11 points, five rebounds, three assists, or excuse me, three blocks in the first half. Javon Jones and Shaquille Bender, Kobe Newton all had eight. Jeremiah Davis, six. That was Kobe Newton with eight. Sean Newman Jr. had four, Banks three. Mike Ofebu had a bucket for Cypress. Blake Ballard had nine points, and then it was slim. Christian Butler, three. Onya Jekwe, three. Hattie Asaley, three. Three points, three rebounds. Grant C. had two, and Allen Wright made a free throw in that first half. Asaley, again, 24 and 13 in the first game. It was an 11-point game. Cypress held him close. He only has three points and three rebounds in the first half, and you see the score here. Out of the halftime, we're ready. Wright, Asaley. C with the ball now on Yajekwe and Renfro Hardy. Here's Asaley working on Howland with the three blocks, double team kick out. On Yajekwe, step and shoot, no good. Rebound long to Sean Newman Jr. Running the pack. Eight points for Jeremiah Davis, third assist for Sean Newman Jr. And there's a foul on Howland. Excuse me, that's the fifth assist for Newman Jr. Fullerton averages 16 assists a game, 10 turnovers. They're plus six for the season on assist to turnover ratio. Right, thought about something on the left elbow. C, shaded to the left, uses it, gets baseline, reverse. <laughs> So the sophomore out of Long Beach Poly makes it 52 to 23. Davis kick out Newman Jr. Uh, 55-23. See again underneath the left this time. No. Here's Newman Jr. Kobe Newton now left-handed pass to Bender. I see you shaking your head over there. I was just saying, if you want to uh, teach kids how to run a break, you show them that clip. It's 18-24, left to go in this ball game. Just start the second half of play in Fullerton. You know, starting this second half like they played the first half, running and making. Wright uses his strength. That's the fourth block by Howland. And here's Bender one more time, and he's fouled. So 18.06, just started the second half of play. And Fullerton's put up a quick seven to the two of the Chargers. Blake Ballard and Slater Miller check in for the Chargers, three and four respectively. Four. 
Newman Jr. Kept the dribble alive, gets into the lane. Triple team poked away by Onya Jekwe. Scrum on the floor as Saley. Comes out of the pack with it to see. Blake Ballard had nine points. C. Looking for a Saley. Bad pass behind him. So it's a turnover with 17.34 to play. And Mark Pavlovich mentioned tomorrow softball, softball, and softball at Cypress with a SportsnetUSA.net invitation. Did you tell everybody they should come out and watch? I did not. Okay. They should, though, right? As we watch Kobe Newton with his third three. So it is 60 to 23. Newton with 11 points in double figures. C, spinning in the lane, taken away by Newton. Ahead of the pack is Jeremiah Davis. The unselfishness of this Hornet team is really the key why, they're, why they rank number one and only one loss. And there's an offensive foul on Hattie Asaley. And that time it was a charge. First time, no. This time, yes. Yeah, I think everybody ought to come out to Cerritos tomorrow and walk up the table and go, you're Corey, you're Mark, shake their head and walk away. <laughs> Not what I was expecting. That's usually the refrain. Yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah. Man, you guys are old, aren't you? And uh, 62 to 23. You still haven't made it out of school? <laughs> Lifetime students. Davis has he blocked by Asaley. Good help defense by the big man. And here comes Cypress running. Asaley gets it. Slips. Blocked. Fouled underneath by Pender. So Hattie playing with renewed passion here in the second half. Steps to the line. Out of Los Alamitos, the Griffin. Almost a block a game. Well, this is where you want to find the heart of your team, Corey. I mean, it's always, it's always great. You watch Fullerton right now. They're all having fun. They're laughing and everything else. It's easy to do when you're up by 38 points in a game. Is it that easy to do when you're down by 38 points? Show me the player that's playing like the game is even, like he feels like the glass is half full, and I'll let him play in every game. 16-15 to go in the game. Bender crossing on Yezekwe on a step back. Left is short, great defense by Mark. Here's Christian Butler. Asaley, use it. You think you have the advantage. Turn, face, double team, kick out on Yejekwe. Misses badly. Loose ball foul on Asaley, and he's getting frustrated out there. 62-25. So under 16 to play. Cypress still in that man-to-man -man defense. Newman Jr. open three again. That's short. Butler leading the break himself. Miller on the Ejekwe. Cut off by Howland and backs it out. RJ Banks will check in the next dead ball for Fullerton. Grant C for Cypress. Miller double teamed on the spin. Open three, Blake Ballard. Can't leave him open, that's his 12th point. His second three. The only player in double figures for the Chargers. 62-28, Newton. Found on the float. Portland, Oregon, the sophomore mark out of Westview High School. One of those guys that averaged 14 points and 81% from the char charity stripe. 
and misses the first. A rarity for Fullerton College. A sailing out CN. So Cypress goes small, looking for some offensive punch. So C and Ballard are going to have to be the ones on the wings. Second free throw is up and in. Twelve points for Newton. Ballard and C. And Mark, when both these teams are playing well, it's not the offense over and back violation. It's like I was going to say, it's not the offense that you're impressed by when both these teams play well. It's always their defense. Yeah, and, and the thing is, is you've talked about a steal here and a steal there. Perry Webster has always said that his offense is being created by his team's defensive play. And nothing is truer than that tonight. 63-28. That's your score. It's 51, 20, 50 to 21 at halftime, and they're not stopping the ball. And when Jeremiah Davis can get to the lane that easily, he's got 12 points. Sixty-five twenty-eight. And there's a foul underneath on the steal. Thirty-seven point lead with fourteen twelve to go. No, no, I was thinking I was off. I thought it was sixty-seven twenty-eight, but it's sixty-five twenty-eight, sixty-five twenty-nine. Yeah. Slater Miller, Ocean View High School, Huntington Beach, California. Danny Bowen went to Ocean View High School. Yeah, I have no idea who that is, but that's okay. Somebody you grew up with? Work with, yeah. Okay. Sixty-five to thirty is your score with fourteen ten to play. Davis. And there is a no foul call. Good defense by Wright. Acting by Davis, no go. Ballard thought about the three. Butler walks into a three, and that's Ms. And pushing is Newman Jr. And Mark, you talked to Perry Webster before this ball game. Nice steal by Butler in the step in. Bounce pass poorly to Ballard trying to make something happen about his rotation and playing players. Newton short. I think when you're playing eight players a game and they're all having fun and sharing the ball, may not matter. I, I really, you don't think it matters because they're always having fun and playing solid. Here's Ballard, no good. Rebound tapped and controlled and saved by the Hornets. Yeah, it was interesting because I asked Perry before the game because the last few seasons, injuries have hurt them from getting a... Whoa. And again, the movement without the ball. The whole right side of the defense for Cypress stood and watched the ball and the back door was wide open. Right in the lane, no, Ballard there, put back, short, tied up, alternating arrow. It's coming to Fullerton. Yeah, sort of like me not moving the camera quick enough when they went the other direction. I just, I, Corey, I just got frozen because the movement without the ball by the Fullerton players, you see him standing there and the next thing you know, they're streaking for an opening. But what I said to Perry Webster, Perry, you've had seasons where injuries have played a factor in not winning state championship. Do you rest anybody? What did he say to me, Corey? No, I play my best players all the time. And you can see how much they enjoy playing for Perry Webster. And I like that you talked to both coaches before the game. The three is missed by Jones. I thought you were going to be down there a little bit longer since you had both Drew and Perry. 
Oh, yeah, it was fun talking to both of them. Allen Wright forces away and forces the foul. Ofebu with the reach over. R.J. Banks, Newton, Jones, and Little are the five on Fullerton side for Cypress's side. Ballard right at the line. C at half court. On the free throw line, rebounding is Miller and Onyejekwe. And here's what I like about Perry Webster. Before that free throw, he's up by 37. Corey, he looks at the official, does a bunny hop, and then another little jump and says, you missed the call. That's what he did on the play. Not a coach to be content with a 37-point lead. There's Banks with the rebound, and that's why you like both of them. I mean, it's one of those things that we've talked about, and when you have two young coaches out there that really have their teams and programs doing it well and right, it's just a joy to be around. And there's a foul underneath. Well, you do, you do look at both these young men. You've told me you think these are some of the brighter basketball minds on the collegiate level. Yeah, I really do. And not just them, their coaching staffs. I, we haven't talked much about Cypress's coaching staff. Goodness, that was a beautiful block by Slater Miller. And a foul up top. They wanted the hook on Newton. Onyejekwe gets the foul with the body. We don't talk enough about the Cypress coaching staff that we've had a, been the pleasure of being around. It's one of those things where you get a head coach and you get his staff, and it's just one of those things like how do you keep them with you? And the one front end of the one and one is missed. How do you keep them with you? Because you're building and have built such a good program and players. That's one of the toughest things when you're young and upcoming and smart. Right again underneath, tough going. Rebound stolen by Miller. Second chance coming to the Chargers. Down 67 31, missed three by C. 11 10 to play in the ballgame. For those of you who are watching and wondering about the time, yes, 11 minutes to play. Little misses. And here's Grant with the ball in the front court. And the officials might be making up right now. Fifth team foul. Well, Corey, you talk about assistant coaches. And, and you ask the coaches, how do you keep them? And it's like they even said, well, we try to get our coaches to the next level. We're, it's not like, Jesus, Corey's the best assistant coach I've ever had. I'm going to keep him. They're the type of coaches that say, hey, I'm going to find an opportunity for you to grow. And so they deny themselves the present of a great assistant coach so that that assistant coach can have a future. Miller down low with his fourth point. 67, 33, all Hornets. Banks on the wing. High screen set by Ofebu. And underneath is Mike. He's got four. Sixty-nine thirty-three Miller cut off. Ballard. Down low to Allen Wright. On the left block in the lane. One more time. He's got six. That's a good strong move. Underneath, easy bucket. Last 10 minutes of this ball game. If Cypress can't make a run, you want to run your offense and do good things for the remainder. If Godfrey Little does a good thing out of Eastvale High School, excuse me, Eastvale, Roosevelt High School. And Mark, for the longest time, you, I was going to swear Eastvale was somewhere in the mid California Central Coast. I mean, you didn't know it was just beyond? I did not know. Not far from us, where we well, both live. Far enough. Ballard in the lane with five. Miller, out of his range, misses. Loose ball foul on Allen Wright. And the thing that made that funny is Jackson hops. 
was falling already. And Allen Wright just happened to have a hand on him. <laughs> so with 9-10 to play in this ball game, Hornet 71 and the Chargers 35. Jackson hops, heads to the line, hops out of Culver City High School. Sean Newman Jr. is out of Culver City as well. Teammates at the high school level gets the shooter's touch. Corey always says when you're a good shooter, that touch will come with you. 77.1, 79 in conference for Fullerton as a free throwing team. So what is it overall, 79 in conference or 71 overall? Well, you know which number I'm going to go with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, you only want to make yourself look good as Grant C. Open three, yes. Seven points for Grant C. So what is it overall? 79.1. I've been trying for in years to look good. No, oh, no. in conference. 77 in conference. 72-38 now. Closer to the number you think is appropriate in conference. Hops, no. Rebound. Loose ball foul on Grant C. Mike Ofebu to the line, but there's a full timeout taken by Fullerton College. With 8.33 to play in this ball game, they're up 72-38 over your Chargers. This is Chargers Live on SportsNetUSA.net. And don't forget, Wednesday, February, February 8th, there's a doubleheader. Go ahead, Mark. Women and men Yes. on that day. Corey, uh, when I was looking at the numbers, uh, Bank shoots 82.6 for free throws. Jones at 81.8. Newman... I love this number, 90.6. Realize he's averaging 13 points a game, so it's not a guy that's only taken one free throw once in a while. Then you look at Davis at 87%. It could be. Yeah, it could be, but it's not because I got told by Perry Webster they shoot more free throws than anybody else in the state. But how many does he shoot a game? For the 90? He shoots roughly four free throws per game. Okay. Per game. Okay. So they three. Bat, that's that's eighty. So, that's twenty-two games. So he shoots three free throws a game because you said roughly. That's eighty-eight free throws. No, you said roughly four. So I'm thinking three point something. So that's three free throws a game. It's still eighty-eight free throws. No, three free throws a game. That's sixty-six free throws. No, no, no. no. That's three point nine. I'm going to say four. That's eighty-eight a game. <laughs> what is three? You're not going to win this one. Yeah, you know what? This 8.33 like to play in this ball game, 72 to 38. That's like going out to dinner with Corey. My bill was 19.99. It's really only 19 when he pays. In my case, it's 38.50. Cal State Fullerton math. I'll never figure it out. So Ofebu has four points. Make it five. So that Wednesday, February 8th, is a doubleheader. Both men and women on the court. It's wear all black to the game, blackout, pinkout night. February 10th is youth night for women's basketball and sophomore night, 6 p.m. game time. Misses the second free throw, chased down by Allen Wright. February 14th is men's basketball sophomore night. That game is at 5 p.m. for the Chargers. And you know in May, they also have a Hall of Fame induction night. That's May 11th when they have their Hall of Fame induction event. And that's what's going around on the Cypress Athletic Conference front. Excuse me, Cypress College front. And there's a push out, an elbow to the chest by Slater Miller. Cypress did win on the diamond today. They beat Pasadena City College in the first game of the season, 11 to four. Here's Banks. Kick out to Jones. Keeps his dribble alive, and there's a three-second violation on a Febu. And he was going to come over and take his shot, then decided he was going to pass it. Therefore, he freezes the guy 
in the lane for the three point violation. Under three eight, second violation. Under eight to play in the game. Grant C's got seven points. Checking in on the next dead ball for the Hornets would be Mason Van Beenen. Van Benin. Miller, excuse me, Ballard short. Thought he got fouled. Banks undercut him just a little bit. And ahead of the pack is Javon Jones. He's now in double figures with 10, and it's 75 to 38. And there's a blocking foul as Allen Wright took it hard to the hole. Micah Fabu thought he got a charge. Elbow came out just a little bit, but was not set. And again, a player like Allen Wright, here's the thing that's interesting, because if the playoffs are in Northern California, you're going to get Northern California possible referees who may call the game differently than they call it down here in the South. You need that versatile player that can play hard-nosed basketball because maybe that's what they play in Northern California. We know we've had coaches before just say, you know what, I would have done better if it wasn't for those Northern California referees. Allen Wright with five points. I'm just saying some coaches. Mr. Wright with six points. And it's 75 to 40. Kick out to Jones, miss, weak side rebound. Hops, Jones, misses two. Allen Wright with his sixth board. 6.52 to play in this ball game, Fullerton is going to go to 11 and 0 in conference. Three by Onya Jekwe, short, no, doesn't get the shooter's bounce. Last touch by Fullerton. Looked like he came off the hand of Miller. Cypress gets a second chance. See, there you go, being that pessimist. Who's to say that they don't go on a 35 point run? And Cypress was gonna drop to 14 and nine, seven and four in conference, but again, We'll see, nice little dish. And Miller can't finish, but Onyejekwe is there to clean up with five. 75 to 42. Down low, Van Beenen. The freshman from West Lynn, Oregon, West Lynn High School looking to get the three-point play the old way. So Lake Ballard comes in the game for his brother, Blake. Seventy-seven, excuse me, seventy-eight to forty-two as a three-point play is converted. Allen Wright on Yezekwe now on the wing. Grant C takes his shot short. Team rebound to Fullerton. Five fifty remains in the ball game. Elsewhere around the OEC conference as Banks working against the man-to-man -man defense. Hops. Banks again. Spins in the lane. There's a foul. No, no foul on C. The last touch by C out of bounds with nine to shoot. Saddleback mark is 56. 45 winners over Irvine Valley, so. They stay in the hunt. They're seven and four now in conference. 
15 and 8 overall. Little with 8. 7 against Lake Ballard, and there's a hold. Let's go with that chickism, ticky tack. 78 42 going to the line is Greed Godfrey Little. Godfrey 5'11 out of Roosevelt High School. Down south, another top team, San Diego City. They beat Kuyamaka, 94-69. Little misses the second free throw. So the score remains 79-42. The number five team and the number seven team, Lake Ballard. A deep three out of Valencia. Jones answers. 82-45. So West Valley, number seven, number five, San Jose City, are tied in overtime, 55 apiece. And that's one of those, two of those up north teams, Mark Allen Wright, getting busy down low. 82-47. R.J. Banks, one-on-one -on -one move, misses the layup, but there's another whistle call. 4.27 to play, and we figured it out, Mark. It's not that the officials want to call these fouls. You know how you want to get your reps for the whole game? They're getting their reps as well, so that's why you see all these fouls called late in the ball game. So in other words, it's like that policeman that wants to get his tickets written? No, that's a quota. These, oh. are, these are reps. You know. Oh, okay practice. Nobody's writing a practice ticket. Banks, two of two. 84-47. Santiago Canyon with 8.46 to play in their ball game. They're all over Santa Ana. 74-43. See there? Reps. I saw that. He said, hey, you know, I haven't called one all night long where somebody's tapped an arm. 84, 47, 4, 16 to play. Actually, if they call one next time down, maybe it will be a quota. Slater Miller makes the first. And just started in Orange Coast, makes the second. Riverside up early, 16-9 over Orange Coast. So again, Cypress will reset that lineup in just one moment as Jordan Taylor wearing number five is on defense. A deep three by Little, no. Onyejekwe, Kierce Taylor, Wright, Lake Ballard, and Miller are the five on the floor. And the pass hits the rim, as you saw. And here's Javon Jones out of the pack. Godfrey Little, quick three, no. Rebound to right. He's approaching a double-double tonight. Wright's got eight rebounds. Six points. Next dead ball for the Chargers, Caleb Herbert Dwyer will check in. Jackway with four. Taylor, the left-handed three. Pure. 84 to 52. Fullerton averages 86 points a game, Mark. I gave him 90, so I, I rounded up by four. But again, averaging 86, this is their most offensively fluid team in the last few years, and Banks got away with a walk. Little, a floater, teardrop in the lane, hits their average, 86 to 52, and Hornets take a timeout. So it's just a substitution timeout, so let's go. 
That's what you call a volleyball sub, Mark. Move it along. Move it along. So Avery, Donovan Avery out of Santan Valley, Arizona, Ridgeview Prep High School. We know a couple people live near there. Yep. 86-52, gonna have to give him a call this weekend. 2.36 to play. This is Chargers Live on Sportsnet USA. Net zero for the Chargers as well. Let's see, and there is Dwyer for three. Caleb said, you put me in, I know what to do with the ball, 86-55. Gabriel Klinkenberg also in the ball game. 6'5 out of Beckman High School. Lake Ballard quick release three. No. And there's Avery. Fifteen in gold is gonna be Trevon Morris. And the Hornets get a three for Ian Leary. Rancho Buena Vista High School, 89 to 55. Morris Taylor, who stays in. Off the leg of Little. Eighty seconds remaining in this ball game. Taylor, second three. He gets it. He's got six points. 89-58. So the players down the line showing what they can do here in the final minute of the ball game. Van Beenen down low. Avery, no. Has it poked away by Morris. Nice little pass by the big man down low. Throws it over his shoulder. It looked like it was going to be an easy layup and wasn't finished for the Hornets, but the Hornets have looked spectacular this night. Little. Leary. Van Bean in the lefty. He misses the three hops. Showing some hops on the rebound. The putback doesn't drop, but he was fouled on the wrist. So don't forget, February 8th, we'll be back here for the doubleheader. Blackout slash pinkout night here at Cypress. And don't forget tomorrow, 9 a.m. is the first game or 10 a.m. first game tomorrow? 10 a.m. 10 a.m. is the first game between Folsom Lake and Southwestern. No, Cerritos, Cerritos. excuse me, Cerritos. And Cerritos and Folsom Lake have the first game. Then the next game at 11.30 will be Folsom Lake against Southwestern. And the free throw is missed. Rebound is Van Beenen taken away. Here's Taylor. And the third game tomorrow will be Southwestern versus OCC. Lake Ballard misses that three. Long rebound to Morris. Under 30 remains. So Hornets are going to finish with 89 points as a foul. Sending Blinkenberg to the line. Lincolnburg connects. 89 to 59. Both free throws are good by Gabriel. So 89 to 60 will be your final score. With 17 seconds of play in this ball game. Fullerton will improve to 22 and 1, 11 and 1 in conference. Cypress will drop to 14 and 9, 7 and 4 in conference. For Mark Pavlovich, the staff here at Cypress College, thank you for everything. Once again, the final score 89, Fullerton, Cypress 60. This is Corey Nalen and Mr. Pavlovich on Chargers Live.
on SportsNetUSA.net.